Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this picture. This apparently simple image of an onion requires the application of some basic lighting techniques in order to achieve a successful result. Due care and attention to the staging and setup is also necessary. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. OK, so let's start with the subject. That's uh, an onion. And what I've done is I've taken a slice through this onion uh, about 5 mil thick. Here we are. And that slice is taken from the centre of the onion. And I've mounted it on this uh, small piece of steel wire. I've also wrapped the whole thing in cling film. That makes it a lot easier to handle while you're setting up the shot. To actually take the picture, we'll remove the cling film. OK, so this now needs to be set uh, in position. And the way I'm going to do that is to use a lab stand. So I'm just going to place that on the table here. And I'm just going to clamp this in position, just hanging down like so. Here we are. And doing it this way gives you an awful lot of control over exactly how you place your subject. OK, so the next thing to do would be to just set up a background. Now for the background, I'm just using a piece of um, black wool cloth. And I'm just going to hang this about here somewhere. So another couple of lab stands and a simple rod. And I'll just clamp that in position like that. And now I can just attach the cloth just with a couple of simple spring clips. So, there we are. So that's it for the set. And you can see that there's about 30 centimetres, about a foot, between the back of the subject and this background that I've got here. OK, now at the front here I have the camera, uh, and that's set up on this tripod. And the camera is tethered into Capture One software, so it's easy to follow along and see the results as I get them. Right, now I'm using this medium format camera. I have on the front of here a 120mm lens, which is roughly the equivalent of a 70mm lens on a full frame camera. OK, so this has a waist level finder. Uh, so I'll just put that up, turn the camera on. There we are. So that's all on now. Uh, next thing to do would be just to set it up. It needs to be uh, a little bit higher. I'm going to go for a straight on shot. So I want this about the same height as uh, the subject there. So I'm just going to wind it up on the centre column of this tripod. There we are. Something like that. And with that in something like the right position, what I'll do now is just roughly focus it. So I can do that just by looking down the uh, viewfinder here. Just get a rough focus. About there should do it, I think, for the time being. OK, so having set all that up, next thing to do is to just have a little look at the settings that I've got on the camera at the moment, which I can do through the software here. So you can see that it's in full manual mode. I've got a shutter speed of 125th of a second, ISO 100, and at the moment, I've got an aperture set of f8. So just with those settings and no flash set yet, what I will do is just grab an image just to check I don't get any contamination with those settings uh, under these lighting conditions. And there we are. You can see that there is actually a small amount of image there. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually just increase the aperture, just to cut out that tiny bit of uh, light. Now obviously if you're doing this under normal lighting conditions, the lights in here are very bright to do the video, uh, you probably will be okay at those sort of settings. But for me, I'm going to change this from f8 to f16. There we go. And I'll just grab that again, again with no flash, just to make sure that I don't get any contamination. And there we are, you can see from that, that it's all completely disappeared. Okay, 
So now I know that at those settings, the only light which is going to affect the subject is the light which I add from uh, the studio flash. Right, so in order to light this then, the uh, way that I want to do this is to light it predominantly from behind. This is a translucent subject, um, so it's quite easy to do this sort of thing with. That's why I made the uh, slice through the onion about 5 mil thick. Any thicker and it starts to get uh, a little dense, so you need an awful lot more energy in order to illuminate it properly. OK, so with what we've got, I'm going to place a couple of flashes uh, just at the back here. So here I've got a flash. I'm just going to pop that in there. Either side of the uh, black cloth which is forming my background. So there we are, they're all in position now. These are uh, relatively small uh, flash units. They have a combined energy of about 250 joules, which is roughly the equivalent of two normal speed lights. OK. So with those set at an arbitrary energy level, what I'll do is grab an image and we'll see if we can set the exposure. OK, so this is our initial test image and you can see from this there's a few things not quite right with it. Firstly, I'm getting some spill onto the background cloth at the edges and that's caused by these lights being slightly in front of uh, the background. So I'll need to move those back out of the way. Uh, the next thing, of course, is that I'm also getting a bit of flare. Uh, these are right on the very edge of where the uh, image area from the lens is, and you're bound to get flare at that sort of distance. So that needs to be addressed. And then the obvious one is that I've left the cling film on the subject. So I'll need to remove that as well. OK, so let's just address those few points. So there we are. I've removed the cling film from the subject. And I've moved the backlighting away by possibly another uh, 30 centimetres or so. OK, so with those little changes made, what I'm going to do now, just grab another image and we'll see what it looks like this time. OK, so in this one you can see that we've lost quite a lot of energy due to the inverse square law and also we're starting to lose the detail on the background, which is obviously what we want. But we've still got a little bit of flare. So to address those points one at a time, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is try and uh, just make the lighting a little more efficient. And the way I'm going to do that is use a reflector on each one of the lights at the back. Here we are. So this is just a simple reflector, which I'm just going to place on each one of these. This is the equivalent of uh, zooming in your speed light or flash gun. It will just make it that little bit more efficient. There we are. So with that done, what I'll do now is just grab another image and we'll see what it looks like now. OK, I think that's starting to get there in terms of exposure, but the flare has now become very apparent on both sides. But that's fairly easily addressed. What I've got here is a couple of card flags, uh, just black on one side and white on the other, and I've just clamped them to a couple of pieces of wood so I can place them on here and just flag off the extra bits of light that are affecting the lens. So if I just place those about there somewhere, again, this is about, uh, what, 35, 40 centimetres, a uh, foot and a half uh, away from the subject at this side. Uh, and hopefully, I'll just check in the viewfinder, yep, yeah, they're not obscuring the actual image itself. So with those in place, I'll just grab that again and see how it looks now. And there we are. What a huge difference those two pieces of card make. So now the background is very nearly pure black and the subject is looking quite good actually. 
I think it needs a little bit more exposure, so I'm going to add uh, what, another stop uh, to both lights. So I can do that through the camera control here. So I'll just select that light, add one stop, and select the other light, and add another stop. There we go. So with that change made, I'll grab an image and we'll see what we get now. Yes, I think as far as exposure is concerned, that's much better. I'd just like to check the focus, so I'll just zoom all the way in. We'll have a little look. It's not quite there. Needs a bit of fine tuning. So I'm just going to start up live view in the software here. There we are. So this is showing me exactly what the camera is seeing, but I can make the image quite a lot bigger and I can zoom right into the center. So this is the bit that I want to focus on. So I can use the controls here just to move the focus point on the lens. There we are. And that's nice and crisp now. OK, so with that now done, we can dispense with live view. And I'll just grab another image. There we are. I think that's looking quite good. I'll just zoom in. Check the focus again. Yeah, that all looks pretty good to me. OK, so that's it for actually capturing the image. Next thing to do would be to put it into Photoshop and do some post-production, get rid of the support, etc., and turn it all the right way up. OK, so here we are in Photoshop, and I've loaded up the file of the image that I captured earlier. Uh, so the first thing to do would just be to make a duplicate of this. So I find the easiest way to do that is just to go onto the layer here, right-click the mouse, ask for a duplicate layer, but ask for a new document. And we'll just call it Onion. So click on OK. And now Photoshop has made me a new document, put it at the top here, so I can now close down the camera original. And this is the file which I will be editing. Right, so the first thing to do would be to turn this the right way up. So I'll just go to Image, Image Rotation, 180 degrees. There we go. So now the onion is the right way up. And next thing to do would be to address the support here. And also, you can see the edges of the pieces of card, etc. So as this was uh, on a black background, and we have a very good black, uh, the easy way to do all this is just to add a new layer. And on this layer, I'm simply going to paint in black and paint out all these bits that I don't want. So just making sure that black is selected as the foreground color. I'll pick a paintbrush, have a look at the size. Yeah, that's OK for these bits. And we'll just run down here and just take out, quite roughly, all the bits that I don't want. There we are. And then just to do the detail near the edge of the onion where the support enters, what I'm going to do is zoom all the way into 100%, navigate to that area, and now I can select a much smaller brush. Let's make it a little bit harder. And with this, I can just very carefully take out the steel wire support. There we are. So with that done, I can now just zoom all the way out. There we are. And I think I might just add a little adjustment layer uh, just to enhance the colors that I've got. So I'll just pick a hue and saturation adjustment. And I'll just increase the saturation ever so slightly. There we are. And if you want to just quickly go back to see what it was like before, just click on this little eye icon, and that will take that adjustment out. So that's what we've got now. That's what we had before. So it's just made the colors come out a little bit more. Now, as that is on a completely separate layer, um, I've got the ability to change my mind. and I can always just turn that layer off. 
or on as required. So it just remains to pick a crop. Uh, once again, I'm using this for video and therefore I've got a fixed ratio of 16 by 9. And the other thing that I'd like to do, I think, is just maybe square this up ever so slightly. I think it is all just leaning over a bit. So I can use the straighten command for that and just draw a line down what I think is the centre of the onion. There we are. I can just centre that in the image here. And there we have it. I've ended up with an image which is full of impact. And it's very simple. But the techniques involved in capturing the image has enabled me to have a really solid black background with no fiddly cutting out required around the actual onion itself. And I think overall that's worked rather well. OK, well I hope you liked watching how I made that image and if you like watching these sort of things do click on the other images as they appear and don't forget to subscribe. Oh and hit the like button. Thank you very much for watching.